The Assassin's Creed series has always been good at one certain aspect, and that is the cities. Whether it's the rendition of Rome in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, the portrayal of Victorian London in Syndicate, or even the likes of Alexandria in Origins. Every city in this series has been beautifully recreated from the grounds up. That's why in this video, I want to go over the best cities from each Assassin's Creed game. Do you remember that this video is all my own opinion, and you'll definitely have a different favourite city. So with that said, let's just jump right into it. Okay, let's start with the first Assassin's Creed. The cities in this game are all quite stunning. There's Masyaf, Jerusalem, Acre and Damascus. And all of these cities have been recreated quite accurately to fit the game's time period. But if I was to choose one city out of this game that would be my favourite, i definitely have to go with Damascus. Everything about this city feels so good. It's so active and crowded with NPCs, the skyline in the back, the dense buildings and each district within. Ubisoft really nailed the portrayal of this city, and they did such a good job drawing inspiration from the real historical city of Damascus. There's three very detailed districts, which consist of the poor district, the middle district and the rich district. I think those district names are all self-explanatory. The iconic landmarks and buildings were all done to perfection, such as the Umayyad Mosque, the Citadel of Saladin and of course Bab Tuma, which was one of the seven gates inside the city. I can already see the potential of the city if Assassin's Creed 1 ever was to get a remake. If it looks this impressive for a game that's 16 years old, just imagine how stunning it could be with a complete remake. So in my opinion, Damascus stands out as my favourite city in Assassin's Creed 1. Honestly, when I think about it now, all the cities in this game were truly remarkable. Now moving on to Assassin's Creed 2, and just like Assassin's Creed 1, it's quite an old game, yet the cities in this game are still all stunning. If there's one thing that Ubisoft can do right, it's recreating landscapes and cities in Assassin's Creed. Anyway for Assassin's Creed 2, there's quite a few cities to choose from such as Florence, Venice, Monteregioni and San Gimignano and Forli, which are all once again recreated quite well. But the city I've chosen as my favourite would have to be Florence. First off, Florence is very, very iconic both in the game and in real life. It gave us this iconic scene. It is a good life we lead, brother. <sighs> the best may never change. And may it never change us. The city of Florence is Ezio's home city. It's where the game began. We witness Ezio's birth here all the way to his death. There's an incredible amount of famous landmarks in this city and the fact that Ubisoft implemented pretty much all of them as accurately as possible deserves some credit. The most notable ones are of course the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore, which kudos to Ubisoft once again for nailing every little detail of this building. There's also Palazzo della Signora, which is the building we see Ezio climb to talk to his father when he's in prison. And also Ponte Vecchio, which is the bridge where we see Ezio have a fist fight right at the beginning of the game. That's just naming three landmarks. There's so many more. I would love to one day visit Florence in real life. It's definitely a place that's on my bucket list. Okay now we move on to Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Now unlike the other two previous games before this, there's only one city that the game fully focuses on and that's Rome. So for that reason, Rome has to be my favourite city in this game. Sure you could say Monteregioni but that does not count because that's only for one sequence and we all know what happened after that one sequence. Anyway let's talk about Rome in this game. I found this bird's eye view of the city and just look how stunning it was. Now sure, a lot of people may not like Rome in this game, simply because of how much empty space there was, but for me, I didn't really mind it. It just created more realism. I mean, where else do you want the Colosseum to be? In the city? In my opinion, Rome in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood felt like a perfect blend of the elements we experienced in the cities of Assassin's Creed 2. The addition of the Borgia families added a fun dynamic to exploring and conquering each different region. What made Rome so special was the diverse NPCs you'd encounter in each district, making the city feel a lot more vibrant and unique. There's also the assassin recruits, which were featured a lot more in Brotherhood and the Rome recruits were all pretty fun. There was also the Romulus tombs which were also fun and pushed the exploring incentive even more. Of course like every other city I've mentioned in this video so far, Rome was filled with historical landmarks. The Colosseum, Castel St. Angelo, St. Peter's Basilica and many other notable landmarks added to the experience. So yeah, all in all, since there's only one city in this game, Rome is of course my favourite for Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. It seems like Ezio has travelled everywhere and Assassin's Creed Revelations is no exception. 
we've moved past the likes of Italy and instead we witness Ezio into Turkey or Istanbul. Anyway for Assassin's Creed Revelations I believe there's only two cities we really explore. The first is of course Constantinople and the second is Cappadocia. Now my favourite city is actually Cappadocia which is of course a surprise to a lot of you. Whilst I did find Constantinople pretty cool, it was Cappadocia that was completely different from what we've ever seen before in any Assassin's Creed game. You see Cappadocia is a city that instead of being on top of the ground, it's actually underground. It's a complete departure from anything we've ever seen. What's unique about it is that the city is not just populated by regular civilians, but instead it's a Templar city. I believe this is one of the only cities in the series where it's not historically accurate. The underground cities in real life were not as open and vast as the ones in Revelations. Instead there were a network of tunnels and rooms all intertwining with each other. Cappadocia in the game is pretty cool to explore. You got shops, secret tunnels and a lot of levels going up that makes it so unique. I doubt we'd ever see something similar to this again. It is a shame that only one sequence occurs here in the game. I would have loved to see it be used a lot more. However, the good thing is we can always go back to Cappadocia doing free roam so I guess there's that. Okay so we finally moved on from the Ezio trilogy and we enter something entirely different and that is Assassin's Creed 3. This game is the opposite of what the Ezio trilogy settings were. Instead of Italy, we're now in America. In Assassin's Creed 3 there's really only two major cities, Boston and New York and choosing between one of those was actually pretty difficult. Both cities were amazing in their own way but I eventually decided on Boston being my favourite city in Assassin's Creed 3. This city when compared to New York was a lot better in terms of parkour, visuals and just an overall experience. There was a filter that was thrown onto New York which was Ubisoft's attempt to distinguish it. Boston as a whole was rather large and there was plenty to do. You had your homestead missions, delivery requests, forts or just finding collectibles. I will say my only issue with Boston was probably the large space of nothing that was almost on the west side of Boston. Other than the sink point there was pretty much nothing there. There were also a few historical landmarks and buildings. One that I found quite interesting was Paul Revere's house. I didn't really see it much in the game and now that I know it's an actual building in the game it's pretty cool. Now after Assassin's Creed 3 we have Assassin's Creed Black Flag and this game had some of the better looking cities in the series. Of course the time period does play a massive part in this. The game has three main cities which are Havana, Kingston and Nassau and the majority of people may pick Havana as their favourite city but for me it has to be Kingston. There's just something about this particular city that makes it stand out for me. The way each building is designed and structured, the port near the ocean and the massive mansion near the backside were things that all stood out to me the most. The design of Kingston which featured some sort of colonial style structures, cobblestone streets and a lot of markets all really blended in quite well with what the Caribbean time period was like. You can tell there was a lot of inspiration with the British and Caribbean aspects when it came to the architectural side of things. Kingston was also the city where we get that iconic Mary Reed reveal scene. Sure in terms of story and side content there isn't much to do in Kingston when compared to Havana but I'm more focused on the appearance of the cities and how amazing they look. Havana is definitely more vibrant but it's how well structured Kingston is to me that makes it my favourite city. Ok now moving on to Assassin's Creed Rogue and for this game there's really no other city than New York but surprisingly I found New York in Assassin's Creed Rogue to be a lot better than what New York was in Assassin's Creed 3. You see in AC3 New York is considered to be bleak and it looks pretty dull however in Assassin's Creed Rogue it's the opposite. Of course we know that Assassin's Creed 3 takes place after Rogue so it's pretty obvious why New York in Rogue looks a lot better. It's not destroyed or burnt in a fire and the settlement is full of life. It was a lot more packed in terms of NPCs and there was actually colour there. The city as a whole in Rogue feels a lot more alive and it's definitely one of the better portrayals of an American city in Assassin's Creed. New York in this game is a lot more focused on buildings rather than what Assassin's Creed 3 did and implemented more of the open countryside to it. It's a lot bigger than the Assassin's Creed 3 New York. So yeah, perhaps if there was another city in Rogue I'd have a lot more to choose from but then again this game did not take long at all in its development. Assassin's Creed Unity. This selection in the video is of course the most obvious. After all there's only one city in this game. Well that's not if you're including Saint Denis which is from the Dead Kings DLC. Anyway that one city is of course Paris during the French Revolution from 1789 to 1794. First off Paris in this game was recreated very well. 
There's landmarks such as the Notre Dame, to even the Eiffel Tower, which may not have been in the main story, but it's still featured in a World War II mission. The streets are packed full of crowds, making it very alive. You can tell it's definitely one of the cities in the series where Ubisoft took their time on it. It's pretty clear that it's during a French Revolution, which we can see from the constant protesting and the fires started in the streets. Paris in this game is definitely created with a focus on parkour, making it almost seamless when parkouring with Arno over buildings. The atmosphere depending on which district you'd be in was pretty apparent, and I like how consistent each part of Paris felt. Despite all the positives about Unity's Paris, I will say there was one thing that I found a bit annoying at times, and those were the crowds. Now don't get me wrong, Unity's crowds are impressive in their sheer size and intricacy, but there can be moments where the crowds are just a bit overwhelming, making navigation around the city feel a lot bumpy. I mean sure it's cool to walk around and take everything in, but let's say you're chasing a street thief. At times, it would be annoying just because of the sheer amount of NPCs in your way. Moving on from Assassin's Creed Unity, we have Assassin's Creed Syndicate. And once again, just like the previous game, there's only one city to choose from, and that is London. Or more specifically, Victorian London. I think it's pretty safe to say out of all of the cities in each Assassin's Creed game, Victorian London to me felt the most polished in its design. There's just an incredible amount of attention to detail from the architecture of each house, factories, buildings, clothing, and even the Victorian carriages. Everything just felt very authentic to when the game was set. You can see smoke coming out the factories, steam trains and machinery giving you that very Victorian feeling. The city had historical landmarks and buildings such as Big Ben, Buckingham Palace, Westminster Abbey and even the intricate design of the River Thames. I will say the wide street did kind of ruin parkour for me, but that's how it was back then so it's to be expected. The wide streets help with carriages and sets up for the future of vehicles. The city of Victorian London in game was the complete opposite of what we're really used to in Assassin's Creed, but it's certainly a good one. I even love the fact that we had real life historical figures make their way into the game, such as Charles Darwin, Queen Victoria and many more. We also witnessed the city go through real historical events, like witnessing the construction of the Thames Tunnel, adding a more realistic feeling to the game. So yeah, all in all, London from Assassin's Creed Syndicate is such a great city, and it's one that stands out as one of my favourites in the entire series. Okay now here is where the cities just spiral out of control and we enter a level of insanity. The RPG games had a ton of cities and there's an incredible amount to pick from. I can pretty much make an entire video on cities from each of the RPG games if I wanted to. That's how many there were. But for Assassin's Creed Origins, there was one city that stood out the most to me and that was Alexandria. First off, the size of Alexandria is quite massive for just one city in an open world game. It's pretty much the same size or if not similar to New York in Assassin's Creed 3. There was so much detail in everything about Alexandria. This ranged from the buildings, the architecture, the clothing and even the enormous sized streets. Some of the game's best side quests came from this city and there was so much to do. Of course there is a lot of water around it, but there's walkways and bridges that make it traversable. It may not seem as big as the way I'm describing it, but try walking across the city, it will take some time. I love the fact that each accessible building has some of the most detailed interior decor and designs. It's no surprise we can see why Ubisoft had an extra year to work on this game. One of my favourite buildings in this city is the Pharaoh's Lighthouse, which overlooks the landscape and can be seen from almost across the entire map. You also get one of the best views from up here. The sight of the distant pyramids and the stunning golden sands below is nothing short of spectacular. Next up after Assassin's Creed Origins, we now have Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And just like the previous game, there's an abundance of cities to pick from, all of which are stunning. But if I had to pick one as my favourite, I'd go with a city that a lot of people may overlook, and that is Mykonos. Now sure, this could be considered an island, a town, but also a city. For me, it's a small city. First off, one of the best side quests in this game, being Trouble in Paradise, resides in this beautiful city. I won't go into any spoilers on that, but I do highly recommend playing through it. Anyway, the city itself is stunning. The view from the ocean on your ship just looking at the city in the distance is nothing short of breathtaking. It's of course based on the real Mykonos city but on a much smaller scale. That's another city I'd love to visit that's on my bucket list. The views that you have of this city from on top of the statue are spectacular and it overlooks the entire ocean. The focus on this city is of course the Temple of Artemis which stands atop the Acropolis of the city. 
The interior of it is very detailed and was crafted with a lot of care. As I mentioned earlier, there's that one side mission that stands out in the city, but it's not just that side mission, because Mykonos in Assassin's Creed Odyssey has some of the best side quests in general. It's weird because it almost feels like the city was created before Ubisoft even created the main cities, because it all connects with the main story, and it does this so well. So yeah, Mykonos for me is the standout city in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Okay now for the last game in this video, we have Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And much like the previous two RPG games, there's once again, no surprise, a lot of cities. Now I'm not really a fan of the cities in this game, I find them all to be very dull and repetitive. However, there was one city in particular that caught my eye, and it's actually pretty good looking. The city I've chosen as my favourite in this game is Jovik. This particular city almost makes you think that you're back in Norway with how the buildings are designed on top of the snow. It's a very unique city with how it's created. Jovik is one of the only cities in this game that gave me a weird nostalgic Assassin's Creed 1 feeling, and it reminded me of what Assassin's Creed could be. Scaling rooftops in a city that was full of stone structures, churches, and also a narrative that focused on taking out Templars. Some of the better quests were focused in Jovik, and there were many secrets to explore, whether that be underground or above. It seems great in this city. Parts of Jovik are very reminiscent of Roman style streets and buildings and other parts felt like I was back in Norway. You could feel the fusion of Norse and Christian elements on a base that's influenced by Roman architecture in this particular city. So yeah, Jovik to me is my favourite city in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. There's not many great looking cities in the game, but this is one of them. So there you have it. Those are my favourite cities from each Assassin's Creed game. If you had a different opinion in any of the games mentioned, be sure to leave it down in the comments below. I'm quite interested to know what you think. So yeah, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one.